right, so I am going to do many multi, uh, many Duolingo lessons. I want to do 10 or 20, let's see how far we get. Um, I'm going to do one lesson per language. These are the languages I've selected on Duolingo. I do have uh, multiple uh, apps that I use and multiple methods anyway, books and self-study material and I'm making my own method but today I'm just going to show you how I go through Duolingo lessons. You can see that <laughs> I am not a frequent, well I am a frequent user but I don't have a daily routine so to say. This graph perfectly shows that. Like on Monday I think I did like 15 uh, languages uh, so only uh, one lesson per language um, something like that. Then on Tuesday I obviously told myself I was gonna go ahead with that each day. Then I don't. I just did like five or six. You get about ten points per lesson I suppose. Um, and then on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday I was busy or at least didn't find the time, didn't want to maybe. So today I'm going to do that again so this video also helps me actually to build up a routine and building up a routine is one of the essential things you need um, in order to advance advance your level right to get better well obviously to get better I'm not going to say that Duolingo is the way to help you well to uh, learn to speak a language because you don't speak that much but that's for another video too now I'm just gonna go ahead with Italian. Lui conosceva l'adolescente. And um, yeah, I'll show you how I do it. So um, he knew the teenager. This one is easy. Um, conosceva. Conosceva. I know from. Uh, it looks like Spanish. Um, Sempre sapeva. She always knew. Um, you can actually also do the keyboard instead. Lui la conosceva. Actually, you can also sometimes look at the word bank first and then type it yourself. It's a little bit uh, more difficult than uh, than just clicking the word bank. And it's a little bit easier than just writing it yourself without seeing the word banks. So that way you learn a bit and you practice. Lo vedevamo ogni sabato. So actually I'm not usually not minding capital, it doesn't matter for the typing, uh, I mean it will accept your answer. Ogni anno trovavamo più frutta. Uh, so troviamo is uh, an alto, you don't need to put a dot, you can. It's, it's close to Catalan, trovar, and French trouver. Uh, so, it's different than Spanish and Portuguese. It, that happens a lot with those languages. Like Spanish, Portuguese are, have their own uh, root. Um, and, you know, you have a similar thing as in uh, comer, to eat, and comer in Portuguese. And then in French you say manger, in Catalan manjar, and in Italian mangiare. A similar pattern you find with uh, hablar, Hablar in Spanish or falar in Portuguese for uh, to speak, and then in uh, Catalan it becomes um, uh, parlar, which is similar to parlare in Italiano and Italian and French parler. Lo vedevamo ogni sabato. Lo vedevamo ogni sabato. Mio figlio non dava mai da mangiare al suo gatto. So never fed his cat, never gives more food to his cat. Ah, yeah, okay, so this um, exercise, this lesson is about the imperfect, the past tense. Dava. So I, I wasn't really focused. Pensavo la stessa cosa. Lui la conosceva. Lui la conosceva. 
conosceva. Mi pensavi? Mi diceva di non bere più birra. Il contadino dava da mangiare al cavallo ogni giorno. Il contadino davo, dava da mangiare al cavallo ogni giorno. You see that it even marked a word that I hadn't even pronounced yet. Sapeva parlare. He knew to speak, how to speak. Yeah. Che diceva il poliziotto? Che diceva il poliziotto? Il contadino dava da mangiare al cavallo ogni giorno. So I understand from the context that this is a night, I think. No, I don't know what contadino means, but uh, someone gave food to the horse every day. So the time clause ogni giorno is like uh, in English at the end of the sentence it's il contadino. Contadino. Farmer or peasant. Ok, so, <laughs> so, so far from my context, so much from my theory about context. Ogni anno trovavamo più frutta. Ogni anno trovavamo più frutta. Trovavamo. I'm trying to pronounce it Italian, I know it doesn't sound like an Italian. Sempre sapeva. Sempre sapeva. That was a bit of a northern accent. So I'm afraid I already missed out the opportunity to Mi diceva di non bere più birra. To actually um, have a perfect lesson without any mistakes. Mi diceva di non bere più birra. Mi diceva di non bere più birra. Sometimes it doesn't. Non la vedevamo mai. Non la vedevamo mai. La We never uh, used to see her. Yeah, we never saw Mi pensavi? Mi pensavi? Mio figlio non dava mai da mangiare al suo gatto. So, yeah, so it's a shame because this one, if I paid a bit more attention, I would have had a perfect lesson. But yeah, in the end, like do... Like the little owl says, if you make mistakes, you learn from that. So, this is my one day streak again. <laughs> Now, I had a long streak once, but generally, I forget it to do it for a day or two, and then you lose everything. So, that was Italian. Ooh, Arabic. Okay, why not? <clears throat> so, obviously, I'm not that far with Arabic, because it's a very difficult language. Even though you cannot really tell here, it's like I reached the second checkpoint with Italian. I already reached like the third, but I would say my Italian is, is way better than my Arabic. I only just started Arabic, you know, the, the alphabet. So here we are. Um. Yeah, this is maybe not the most interesting lesson. Um. Um, but why not? It is. Okay, half must be. Hak. No, ah, of course it's for. Hak. Because. Hak. Reading from right to left, this is k and this is f. But that makes sense. Hak. I think you can see why, because of the little curly thing. Hafab. So this is just to get. Hafab. To uh, uh, get yourself acquainted with the sound. Obviously, this is in Romanized script. And then they're showing you the Arabic. Um, this must be... Hafab. This, because it has three consonants and the little two stripes here are the A. So, this is H, then A, then F, then A, then B. So, Hafab. Hakab. Hakab. Fun lesson. 
as an actually because um, it doesn't really have sentences haqab haf so maybe haf i should quickly go through this haq fab fab another one um fab Zoom out, zoom in on this one. Same with Chinese and other languages that have a different spelling. Um, of course, you can always click the Arabic one first, but that's easier. If you want to challenge yourself, you have to. Okay, so this I think is fab. Fab. Then this is cub. Cub. Then this must be hak. Hak. Hafab. And half. Half. Um, this is fab. 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 Um, half. Oh, good. I mean. <laughs> half. Oh. Okay, hak is here. Hak. Hafab. Hakab. That's it. Oh, no. It does show perfect, so that's great. So maybe I should show you another lesson of Arabic because then it's more fun. Um, let's see if it gets me one with sentences now. هي بنتك وهي ذكية يا جورج. Oh, I have to repeat that. هي بنتك وهي ذكية يا جورج. Okay. هي بنتك وهي ذكية يا جورج. So this is something about, yeah, it is about family. No, no, it is about name. He have been fucked, like your daughter? Your daughter is smart, George, something like that. He, bintek, wahia, zakiya. Yeah, right, so she is your daughter. I missed that, that first part. She is, so he. He. He is she. He. <laughs> he in Arabic is she in English. And she is smart. George. Oh, that's a typo. Okay, so I cannot type Arabic yet. So I'm going to use the word bank. Uh, so there we go. I'm going to zoom in a bit again. He. Uh, Bintik. Wahia. The word for famous, what was that again? Zaujik. I can't remember. Ah, no, it's that one. It's a uh, mud. Um, this is mutar. Mutaraj? Mutarshim? Mashhura. Mashhura. Oh, okay. So this one. And then we need this before the name. Yeah. Yeah. Samia. Who um, abnika ya Rosa? Okay. He is your son. I mean, this I could type in English because because it's English. He's your son, Rosa. He's your husband, Rosa. Okay, so. Mm. What's this again? Husband. It's tricky. Oh no, so we start with he. Who? That's who. <laughs> so he in English is who in Arabic. Arabic. And husband. Rosa. No, that's the name, of course. Uh, this is. Um. Zaujik. Yeah, I think this was husband, Zaujik. Um, so you just say he husbands. Oh, the k, k at the end of the word I think means possessive you. Yeah, Rosa. Okay, I cannot even drink coffee. So I think that's it. Kalbika wa huwa ya so this is the type what you hear exercise, as you can see. Huwa kalbika wa huwa sa'id ya kari. Who? Kelbik. 
وهو سعيد يا كري هو كلبك وهو سعيد يا كري ابنك بنتك بنتك جورج ذكي ذكي for for masculine يا جورج okay yeah so what I did differently I cannot see um, I am reading the same so I don't know how that is different هو غريب وهو زوجك يا لما هو غريب وهو زوجك يا هو غريب وهو زوجك يا لما لما هي بنتك يا بوب بنتك ابنك ذكي يا جورج ابنك ذكي يا جورج هو ابنك وهو سعيد يا سامية سعيد ابنك وهو سعيد يا سامية
So I am trying to read if this is masculine or feminine. So who uh, you would say feminine? Shit. Is your dog Omar? Okay. هو كريم وهو زوجك يا جودي. كريم زوجك جودي بنتك ذكية يا سامية ابنك ذكي يا جورج ذكي هو كلبك يا رواد كلبك رواد. رواد. هو كلبك وهو جوعان يا كري. هو كلبك وهو جوعان يا كري. جوعان هو ابنك وهو سعيد يا سامية هو ابنك وهو سعيد يا سامية سعيد Mina föräldrar bor i Storbritanniens huvudstad. Var ligger Rom? Ligger. Rom ligger i Italien. Österrikes flagga är röd och vit. Polen ligger vid Östersjön. Polen ligger söder om Sverige. Polen ligger söder om Sverige. Polen ligger. Om... Mannen har ett ryskt pass. I don't know. Uh, uh, Russian? 
Ryskt. Han är lärare i ryska. Lärare. I. I. Mannen har ett ryskt pass. Mannen har ett ryskt pass. Det finns många stora städer i Brasilien. Var ligger Nederländerna? Mina föräldrar bor i Storbritanniens huvudstad. Mina föräldrar bor i Storbritanniens huvudstad. Ryssland är väldigt stort. Um. Väldigt. Det finns många stora städer i Brasilien. Det finns många stora städer i Brasilien. Polen är ett stort land. Nej, Nederländerna är ett land, inte flera. Nej, Nederländerna är ett land, inte flera. Var ligger Rom? Var ligger Rom? Rom. Österrikes flagga är röd och vit. Österrikes flagga är röd och vit. I don't know how my pronunciation sounds to... Mina kusiner bor i östra Ryssland. Mina kusiner bor i östra Ryssland. Vi är vid gränsen mellan Ryssland och Kina. Vi är vid gränsen mellan Ryssland och Kina. So, sometimes this is a lot of audio. I like um, click to speak exercises. Var ligger de? Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's just, you can see from throughout the exercises that I will do. It depends. Some are more speaking, others are more writing. Great. So, um, I'll try another language. Let's go for Portuguese. And I'll just normally I try to do like uh, one language for each language group, and then until it's like a while ago uh, before I continue to do more languages of the same group. So I did Italian a while ago, uh, not so long ago, so I should not do Swedish, uh, Portuguese right away, but I can go for uh, Greek first. So I'm not going to mix up Portuguese with Italian. So Greek, um, where am I with Greek? Not so far. Oh, I think those beginning exercises have been too long ago, so it doesn't have any crowns here or a yellow circle around. But I suppose I did all of these. Well, I'm just going to go for this one. Accusative. Let's see how far it is related to ancient Greek. Ah, okay, so this is a new word for me. Stop. Ah, that's funny. So, hol sounds like English. Hol. Hol. Oh. Stop. Hol. Hoi. Or hol. Stop. And this is like in the or at the. Yeah, I think, I think this is like a preposition. I think Duolingo is not always very good at that. It just said, I'm so stupid with. Ego trao to tiri. What is this? I drink the duty. What would that be? A loan word? Tiri. Oh, oh, then it's eat. Igi mu agapunta zoa. Ah, 
Zoa. 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 English word zoo. I thought it's like animals and life. Well, it is, but life is zoos or something. Δίνω το πουκάμισο. Δίνω. Πουκάμισο. Δίνω τον ελέφαντα. Δίνω το τυρί στον ελέφαντα. Δίνω τον ελέφαντα. Δίνω τον ελέφαντα. Δίνω το πουκάμισο στον άντρα. Άντρα, πουκάμισο, στον. Αγαπάτε τον άντρα. Αγαπάτε τον άντρα. Άντρα. Δίνω το τυρί στις γυναίκες. Το. Δίνω. Αγαπώ τις γυναίκες. Αγαπώ. Δίνω το πουκάμισο στις γυναίκες. Είμαι στο χολ. Οι γη μου αγαπούν τα ζώα. Αγαπούν. Γη. Αγαπούν. Γη. Τι. 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 Γη. Γη. Together. Or in ancient Greek, I would have said, Oi. Γη. Oi. That's my sons. Oh, sorry. The sons. Then μου. Μου. Makes it my. So, possessive. Then αγαπούν. Is they love. Αγαπούν. Δίνω τον ελέφαντα. Δίνω τον ελέφαντα. Δίνω το πουκάμισο στον άντρα. Άντρα. Αγαπάτε τον άντρα. Δίνω το τυρί στις γυναίκες. Γυναίκες. 
Αγαπώ τις γυναίκες. Δίνω τον ελέφαντα. Kanado kaj Rusio estas grandaj landoj. Multaj Chinoj loĝas en Afriko. Mie, amiko, loĝas en Rusio. Afriko kaj Azio estas grandaj kontinentoj. Azio. So the estas. The verbs don't conjugate. So estas in Spanish, Portuguese, and everything is uh, you are. Here it's just to be whatever form. Um, Grandai continentoi. And ending on J, an adjective or a noun becomes plural. Multai. Chinoi Lojas e Africo Rusio estas en Europo kai Azio I recognize the name I met this girl young woman from at the Polyglot conference so that's when actually I started to do this uh, Esperanto lessons these lessons on Duolingo and then the next day I Rusio estas en Europo kai Azio. Rusio estas en Europo kai. Kai is like from a Greek kai uh, and Azio. I think this is self-explanatory considering the three geographical names you recognize. But here is he. La. The is always la. Lingvo. De. Um, La. Chechio. Chechio is a country. Estas. La. Checha. Yeah, so unlike Spanish, there is no article, or many, uh, unlike many languages, there is no article in Esperanto before. Czech Republic, it's just Czechia. Le voyages de nove al Africo. All right, this is uh, 
tricky. I'm gonna need some help. I'm guessing this is something like J because it's a noun. Apoloi. Uh, yeah, okay. I have the ending right in Pol uh, Polando. Yeah, I, have, I have, don't know. In Polando, Poloi, Parolas, La Polan. I, of course. Yeah, this is tricky for me because I'm thinking about Spanish always when, when I see Esperanto. I might need an article here. Okay. So I am not going to confuse myself with a Romance language now. I'm going to do something very different, Chinese. I did quite a lot on Duolingo already. So, let's see, shopping maybe, hmm, what was this again? Shi. Oh no. Qun. Yeah, that must be it. Lan Tiao Qun. Also zooming in here, so we just had This one, right? Chun. Yes. Just checking. Thank you. I think this one was Lan. Lan. Um. Shi. No, I need this. Wan. Tiao. I needed that help. So we're learning here. And now we need to reproduce it. Chun. All right, let's see. Lan Tiao Tiao Shi. Chun Si Tiao Shi Wahui Shi Shi Na Tiao Chun Zi. All right. So here you see that the third and fourth character are the same. Okay, so this is, I don't know the word, um, but it must be dress. Na shi. Na tiao chun zi. Oh, very relevant. Lan, ta xiang shi shi zhe tiao lan chun zi.他想去试试这裙子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子子
。那条，蓝，裙子，他喜欢那条蓝裙子。他想试试。试试。这条蓝裙子，我只要这条蓝裙子。我只要这条蓝裙子。我会试试那条裙子。我会试试那条蓝裙子。我会试试那条裙子。我会试试那条裙子。我会试试那条裙子。我会试试那条裙子。蓝裙子。想是。妈
So this is also to try. Okay. 他想试试这条蓝裙子。他，他想试试这条蓝裙子，想试试这条蓝裙子。他想试试这条蓝裙子。我会试试那条裙子，他喜欢那条蓝裙子，他喜欢，他喜欢那条蓝裙子，那条蓝裙子。你想试一下吗？你想试一下吗？你想试一下吗？他们。买。But normally I would expect "zai" in addition to or to form the present continuous here. It also appears here, but it doesn't show up in the word bank options. So I was right in assuming "zai" should be here to form the ink form, the present continuous. But we can't, so let's just put "zai、uh, yao." And then eight. This is eight. 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 So it's like have, or, and then we need eight dresses. That's a shame. So they, we can try again. So that's common. Think about word order anyway. 买一共八条。要八条裙子。Shit. So now I have to focus more. They, and then I'm gonna tell my help myself by breaking it up into Google Translate. They. Oh yeah, in total. This was in total. So I'll focus on the minus and hashtag kind of characters for total. Then want. They total ones, yeah. I know those, and then buy. I know that too, because it looks like a little character that's going to the shop. They one. What was it? They in total ones. I、oh, had、yeah, they in total ones. The word order is often very different than what I'm used to. They total ones to buy. They in total one to buy, and then eight. I think this belongs to eight. I don't know why, because this is also eight. I think this is a number compound, and then skirts. So they in total. So again, they in total want to buy eight dresses. Good. They in total. They in total want. 
eight addresses. So they they want to buy Férias em Roma. Carlos e Luana estão de férias em Roma. Eu não quero voltar para casa. Eu sei. Eu também quero ficar aqui. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I did this one recently. Want to stay in Rome? Yes. Eu amo Roma. So, I Eu gosto de ver as sacadas e os muros coloridos. I want to see the something and the colored walls. I want to see the balconies. Uh-huh. Eu amo os restaurantes. Oh, yeah. Quero comer pizza todo dia. Nós precisamos ir para o aeroporto. Luana, tenho uma ideia. Você quer viver em Roma? E nossa casa? E nossos trabalhos? É possível viver e trabalhar aqui. É? Como? Minha amiga Diana tem um restaurante em Roma. E ela precisa de cozinheiros. Você tem certeza? Sim. Tudo bem. Vamos viver em Roma. Родители. Мы любим свою семью. Ее сыновья любят прыгать. Ваши сыновья дома. Твои братья зовут тебя. Это мои дяди и тети. This is my, uh, um, 
Тетя. Дядя. Дядя, тетя. Наши братья зовут нас. Они любят своих родителей. Родителей. Дядя и тетя. Это мои дяди и тети. Это мои дяди и тетя. Они любят своих родителей. Мы любим свою семью. Анна у своих родителей. Анна и своих родителей. Анна своих родителей. Родители. Твои братья зовут тебя. Твои братья зовут тебя. Твои братья. Братья. Семья. Это мои дяди и тети. Это мои дяди и тети. Это мои дяди и тети. Они любят своих родителей. Они любят своих родителей. Они любят своих родителей. Мы любим свою семью. Мы любим свой землю. Любим свой землю. Анна у своих родителей. Анна и своих родителей. Твои братья зовут тебя. Я 
That would confuse me a bit. Maybe later. Um, though the flag is upside down, similar to Polish, Indonesian will not confuse me with Russian, even though it's a, also a new language to me. So let's see what Bahasa Indonesia has for me. Um, I think I did a restaurant last time. So I can follow up on the next level or do places. I'm interested in places. The restaurant was a lot about Nasi. Roma. Roma. Very often in this first introductory vocabulary lesson, I always. Dapur. Sekola. Uh, play them out so that I can learn. Sekola. Sekola. Looks like school. So it's probably a loan word. Roma. Roma. Looks like room. I don't know if it's related. Dapur. Dapur. Definitely not. Roma. To show the question. Dapur. Rumah saya tidak besar. So it's always helpful to not look at the word bank, even though it's it goes automatically. So the house, not is not. Uh, saya is I, I think. So it's my here. Saya. My house is not big, I suppose. Besar. Sekolah dari sini. Dari sini. Dari sini. Dia makan di dapur. Dia makan di dapur. Dia. So it only has he here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Makan dari sini, dari sini. Dia ada di sekolah. So she is at the school. It's the only option. Ada. Ada. Dia makan di dapur. Di. In the kitchen. So he eats in the kitchen. I didn't learn much. From so I'm gonna do one more. Gedung. Di sana. Sana, di, San, sana, gedung ini ada di sana, gedung, ini, gedung ini ada di sana, di, sana. So what I love about Indonesian, amongst other things, is that it's written the way it's pronounced. Building. This is there. Kami makan di hotel. Um, eat at the hotel, and kami is we. Saya suka pasar. Saya is you. Oh no. Oh no, it's I. Um, I suka is. Uh, Suka. Pasar. Saya pergi ke hotel. Pergi. Andi. Pergi. Ke. Pasar. Dia pergi ke hotel. I know this is when the language is, is really new to me, or language in the sense of new words and grammar. 
Si personne ne met la table, on mangera par terre. Si personne ne met la table, on mangera par terre. Personne n'a mis la table alors on ne mange pas. Personne n'a goûté ton dessert à l'orange amère. Dessert. Amer. Goûter. Personne ici n'aime les sauces amères. En Italie, le café est généralement très amer. Je ne goûterai jamais tes plats bizarres. En France, on mange les frites avec de la mayonnaise. Je ne goûtais jamais ce que ma mère faisait. Goûtez. Faisait. Je ne goûtais jamais ce que ma mère faisait. Je pense que personne ne goûtera ce gâteau moche. Moche. Gâteau. Goûtera. Personne ne vous servira si vous êtes désagréable. Personne 
désagréable. Personne ne nous a servi depuis une heure. Personne ne veut mettre la table pour le dîner. Est-ce que tu trouves Elle. que c'est logique, toi Logique. Tu ne goûteras rien quand je serai dans la cuisine. Serait. On ne mange pas le fromage avec de la mayonnaise. Personne ne te servira, alors tu dois te servir. Servir. Ma mayonnaise à la vanille n'a plus à personne. Personne n'aime ma soupe parce qu'elle est amère. Pourquoi personne n'a encore mis la table Personne n'a goûté ma soupe à la mayonnaise. Il a faim et personne ne l'a encore servi. Personne n'a mis la table alors on ne mange pas. Personne n'a goûté ton dessert à l'orange amère. Personne ici n'aime les sauces amères. Je ne goûterai jamais tes plats bizarres. Je ne goûtais jamais ce que ma mère faisait. Je pense que personne ne goûtera ce gâteau moche. Personne ne nous a servi depuis une heure.
tu ne goûteras rien quand je serai dans la cuisine. Ma mayonnaise à la vanille n'a plus à personne. Personne n'a mis la table alors on ne mange pas. Thank you. 